Yo, what's up guys, it's Suraj from Tech Devoted and today I am bringing to you guys a camera comparison between the latest offering from OnePlus, the OnePlus 3 and a mid-range DSLR from Canon, the 1200D. Now I know the Canon 1200D isn't the newest DSLR around but it is still quite good. The 1200D costs around 25 to 30,000 Indian rupees and the OnePlus 3 costs about 27,000 Indian rupees. But obviously taking pictures isn't the only thing that the OnePlus 3 does, whereas for the 1200D, taking pictures is of course its primary function. First let's get some specs and numbers out of the way. The OnePlus 3 has a 12 megapixel sensor with an aperture as wide as f2.0 and the Canon 1200D has an 18 megapixel APS-C size CMOS sensor and the rest really comes down to the lens you're using. I'm making this video with the average user in mind, hence I will only take pictures using the kit lens and I am going to be shooting on auto mode on both cameras, again because an average user really doesn't use the manual controls. Okay so let's start off by looking at some images taken in outdoor conditions or good lighting. I'm gonna say this, the results were quite shocking because a lot of the times the OnePlus 3 had an edge over the 1200D. The OnePlus 3 usually tends to produce a warmer colour in its pictures and the 1200D has a slightly cooler or bluish colour tone and I personally prefer the cooler colour tone. For the colour saturation, I think the 1200D usually does a better job than the OnePlus 3. In terms of sharpness though, even though the 1200D has a higher megapixel count, for some reason the OnePlus 3 produced a sharper image than the 1200D. 9 out of 10 times. At least to my eye, it looks sharper than the image produced with the 1200D. In the exposure department, the OnePlus 3 does a better job most of the times. Dynamic range though is equally good on both cameras. In the depth of field department, the 1200D is usually far superior but that said, the OnePlus 3 also is capable of producing some quite good bokeh images. In terms of low light though, things start to change quite a bit. I shot on auto mode in both cameras but on the 1200D, the flash always gets activated and does its thing. There is no way to turn the flash off in auto mode. And as a result, the 1200D usually does a better job in low light. For example, in this picture here, the guitar is quite clearly visible in the 1200D's image. I did set the flash to auto on the OnePlus 3 but it just wouldn't get triggered a lot of the times and the result of that is a pretty dull looking image like this one. That said, the flash on the 1200D does also have a bad effect at times. For example, here in the picture of the dart, although the depth of field is quite good, because the flash did its thing, the picture ended up looking really bright and that just kills it for me. Yet again, here in this picture of the keyboard, the flash has a bad effect. In the OnePlus 3's picture, you can quite clearly tell that the OnePlus 3 has backlit lighting, but it's kind of hard to tell the same if you look at the picture taken with the 1200D. Talking about the OnePlus 3's performance in low light specifically, it does an okay job most of the times. A lot of the times the overall image turns out slightly dull which is sort of expected, but color accuracy and saturation is quite good for the most part. One thing that surprised me quite a lot is how little noise there is in pictures taken with the OnePlus 3. Most smartphone cameras produce a lot of grain or noise in their pictures in low light, but I observed nothing of that sort on the OnePlus 3. Sort of disappointed with the flash though. When set to auto, it doesn't get triggered most of the times and as a result, you get a pretty dull looking image. Okay, so overall both these cameras are really good. Now obviously if you shoot with the right set of lenses and use the manual mode on the DSLR, you can quite easily crush the OnePlus 3. But the point I'm trying to make here is if all you're going to do with the DSLR is take pictures at a family meetup or at a friend's party, there is really no point in getting one. Smartphones these days do a very good job at that. Plus, if you're only going to shoot on the auto mode and the DSLR, the pictures as you saw are not going to turn out that great. And to be able to shoot on the manual mode, there is a bit of a learning curve. But on the other hand, shooting on a smartphone is dead simple. Even my 3 year old brother can take decent pictures on a smartphone. But that wraps it up for this comparison, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was my first time doing something like this, so feedback is greatly appreciated. Direct links to purchase both products are in the description. And if you personally want to compare the pictures, feel free to download the high resolution samples. But that wraps it up for this video. If you liked what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. It's been Suraj. I'll talk to you guys in my next one. Peace.